Hello, I'm Joel Moser, Robotics Product Manager with MSI Tech in Denver. Today we're here to talk about vision guided robotics and specifically how to set up a vision guided robotic application using a smart camera from Teledyne Dalsa and a robot from Denso Robotics. As you probably already know, robots are very, very good at pick and place operations given predefined pick locations. If your product is always arriving at the exact same place and at the exact same orientation, it's really quite straightforward to program a robot to come and pick it up. But what do you do if your product is arriving at random orientations? Well, in much the same way that I would have to use my eyesight to guide my hand to come in to pick up this part, well now the robot has to rely on a vision system to tell it where to move in order to pick up a part that's randomly oriented. Let's continue now by taking a closer look at the exact hardware we're using today. The BOA smart camera has the vision sensor and the processing engine integrated into one small unit. So although I will be using my laptop today to illustrate what the camera sees, in reality the laptop is not required for this application to run normally. With the processing being done on board the camera, the data can be sent directly from the camera to the robot via ASCII strings over TCP IP. The robot is a VP series six axis articulated arm from Denso Robotics. This particular robot is one of their smallest with only 432 millimeters of reach, but the code that we're showing today is ap applicable throughout their product line. From this robot all the way up to their 1300 millimeter reach VM series. In our application today, we're going to pick and place these fiberglass springs. The camera is going to be mounted above looking down. It is going to determine the center of mass of the part and also its orientation, its angle relative to a horizontal plane. Once it has that data, it's going to send that data over Ethernet to the robot. The, the robot will then initiate motion and pick and place the part. Let's go ahead and start looking at the actual software configuration beginning with the camera. Using the camera software, I went ahead and used uh, blob analysis tools so that I could gather the data I need. The X and Y of the center of mass of the part, shown here, the angle of the part relative to this horizontal axis, shown here, and then also there's a variable in here called FG underscore spring, which is the number of parts in the field of view. The robot is only going to initiate motion if the number of parts in the field of view equals exactly one. Once we have all this data, we have to send it out of the camera to the robot. So in order to do that, we have to set up a one line script. Coming over here to control and then scripting. We're going to put that one line script under the post image process function. So what that means is whenever the camera is finished taking a picture, it's going to go ahead and run this script and send this out its uh, TCP IP port. Um, here's the one line of code I had to write. We are going to be using port 5024 and the data that we're sending is the FG spring variable, which again is number of parts within the field of view, um, the X and Y of the centroid, and the angle. And we're going to end it with uh, a carriage return line feed shown here by the backslash R backslash N. And that's it. That's all we have to do from the camera side. Now let's move over to the robot software. Okay, now we're within the WinCAPS 3 software from Denso the robotic software. And it's essentially just one line of code to get that, get that data from the camera into the robot controller. We're going to be storing all of the robot data here into four different string variables. S29 is going to hold the number of parts, that variable FG underscore spring. S30 is going to hold the x-axis data of the centroid. S31 is the y-axis data of the centroid and S32 is the angle of the part relative to the horizontal plane. The robot code is going to sit here constantly collecting that data and evaluating it. And once S29, or the number of parts shown in the field of view, equals exactly one, 
then the robot code will break out of this and will initiate motion. One important note, which I'm not showing here, is we do have to transpose the camera's coordinate system into the robot's coordinate system, which in this case I was able to easily do using some simple math. So essentially it's just this one line of code in the robot and we're done. Now let's go ahead and run our task.